if you are asking, how do I make $50,000 a year in this business? You'll figure that out, but you're never going to make a hundred. If you're asking, how do I make a hundred thousand a year? You'll probably figure that out too, but you'll never make 500 or six figures a month. And guess what? It's all possible. It's all possible. And, and so, you know, you can't just jump. Like I couldn't come into this business being $300,000 in debt and say, how can I build, how can I go to get to a six figure monthly income? I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to make that mental leap, that belief jump. It was too big, right? But I could say, how do I get out of debt? And then start asking a little bit better question, a little bit bigger question, and continuing to raise the bar because it's not, it's not hard. Like to, the difference of making $5,000 a month here and 20 is very I know that that was like soft trying to recruit me, but it was the best move of my life. When I when I when I called and I said, you know, this is Jeremy, I'm the meat man, I talked to you. Everything changed with that one phone call. Everything completely changed. I've since then found this guy, Brad Smith, to be my, my mentor. I found him to be a friend. I found him to be that that big brother, that that spirit fear of influence that I really needed to pop up into my life at the right time. We're talking about an advisory board member that if we didn't tell you he was an advisory board member and associate partner, you'd probably never know because he's one of the most humble, one of the most giving people that I know. And he, like I probably knocking on the door would have been like, hey, what's up, I'm Jim. Like, yeah. I'm here, I'm hanging out at my house, it's two o'clock, life is good. By the way, did I mention I'm an advisory board member with Symmetry Financial Group and we are hiring? That's what would have been my approach. I didn't know he was an advisory board member until I went to my first big meeting. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? When you talk about somebody who has been instrumental to where I am as a person, as, as, a, as a husband, as a father, you gotta look any further. Mr. Mr. Brad Smith is where it is. So man, I am fired up about today's call. And and Brad, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out on a Sunday. When when you ended your Sunday call 2019, but you're getting on our Sunday call to create some value for us and pour into us. So I definitely do appreciate it. Welcome to the call. Man, I appreciate that. What an intro. <laughs> uh, it's humbling uh, when you, you know, thinking back to that story and all that's transpired, all the things that have happened since then. Um, it's unbelievable uh, where we're at, where you guys are at, where the team is at. I watched the Whitaker agency. Somebody said, and I don't, I don't know if it was you or somebody, I think it was actually <clears throat> maybe Jaime that said, uh, it's, it's one of, if not the best team to be a part of in symmetry. And I couldn't agree more. Um, with where the momentum you guys have, the leadership that's coming up, um, leadership in you, um, man, it's exciting. We're at a really good place, so excited to be on. Man, excited to have you on. And we've got, I'm looking across here, there's probably 23 people, including your cell phone here, and I know at least 10 of them have no idea about your background uh, and, and your story. So can we start there for a few minutes and just kind of catch us up to speed on where you, what you were doing before Symmetry? And uh, as quick as you can, I guess, put us, bring us to up to date as far as how things have been uh, since Symmetry. Yeah, yeah, I apologize, I can't have my video on. I, I always love having video on. My, my computer where I normally sit is right below my three-year-old's bedroom and she's going to bed right now, so. <laughs> I'm out in the shop right now <laughs> doing a call, otherwise I'd be on video. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll kind of, uh, as, as quickly as I can, for those of you guys that don't know my story, I'll kind of go through um, the, the, the 180 that we've been through since coming to Symmetry. Um, a lot of people come to Symmetry and they think it's an insurance business. I, I, I don't call it an insurance business. I call it a restoration business because I see time and time and time again, people's lives being transformed. Mine being, you know, I guess because I'm the closest to it, I feel like it's the biggest transformation because I know where I was at, not just financially, but emotionally. And, uh, you know, just with my relationships and my own self image. Um, I was a business owner 
uh, for about 10 years, I owned a business with my brother, my twin brother, Matt. And, uh, you know, we did pretty well. We struggled a lot, but we learned a lot. And we ended up doing pretty well. And it had to close the business after two years of just a downward spiral um, between 2010 and 2012. If you guys remember back then, the economy and the crash that was happening, uh, we were affected in, in a major way. Ended up going from being debt free at that point to taking on over $300,000 of debt, trying to save this, this business and had to close it down. So, you know, you can imagine a lot of people come into Symmetry and they say, I've got a lot of debt and it's like $20,000 of credit card debt. <laughs> and we were over $300,000 of credit card debt. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was all just pure, pure debt. No, like no, wasn't a mortgage or cards. It was just pure debt. And, uh, you know, my, my, my wife is telling me to, do, to get a job and to, to, you know, I need to go make a resume and I've never done that before out of college. We started this business. So I'd never had a resume or anything. And I'm just doing the math. I'm like, man, any job that's going to hire me, it's going to take me literally 30 years to pay this debt off just before I'm at zero. And it was just so discouraging. And, uh, I just, I, I mean, a year went by where Matt and I were just trying to figure out what we were going to do. And it just became more and more depressing. And a friend of mine had called me about symmetry and long story short, I went and took a look at it and I kind of prejudged the industry of insurance because I didn't know, I didn't understand how much money there was and the impact that it had on people. And I just kind of prejudged it as, as, a, as an industry that, you know, it's kind of a last resort when nothing else in life works out, then you go to insurance. <laughs> and uh, I thought, man, has life really come to this point for me? And, <laughs> but I went down and I, I met with the owners and the top management and, you know, I went down for my quote interview, but really I was interviewing them at least as much as I felt like they were interviewing me. Cause I, you know, for me, I'm the kind of person, probably like a lot of people on this webinar that you don't want to jump ship over and over. You don't want to go to the next shiny object and constantly being, you know, thrown into a new industry. You want to find something that's a real career. And that's what I wanted for my life. So, you know, I, I really interviewed, I interviewed everybody. I wanted to, to know what the lifestyle was like and the income was like, and, um, you know, if I could do it, if I could be successful, if I enjoy it. And I always say this, but there was three things I was looking for and I knew what they were. I knew what I wanted. And I didn't realize how rare that was that to actually know what I wanted, because most people in life, I always, uh, you know, we're all running through life, but 19 out of 20, literally 19 out of 20, 95% of people are running from something. 5% are running to something, meaning that you've identified what you want and you're running in that direction, not just running from anything that, that's chasing you, but you actually know exactly what you want. And there was three things. So I was prepared for this question when Edward Pritchett asked me, what are you looking for? What do you want? And I said, I want to be passionate about what I do. I've had that before. I want to wake up and love what I do. I don't want it to feel like work. And, and the second thing is I want to help people. I want to make a difference in other people's lives because to me that those go hand in hand, being passionate about what I do and, and helping people, they go hand in hand. But number three, I want to make a lot of money doing those two things. <laughs> and I used to be a little embarrassed to say that, but I am not because my family deserves it. My family deserves for me to provide a good lifestyle and to be the example that I want them to grow up to be. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, and it makes life fun. It makes it like a game. Nobody wants to play a game to lose. You play a game to win. And that's what I, I was looking for an opportunity to be able to do that. And, and I found it. Um, I didn't realize it right away. It wasn't like, you know, oh, this is it. It was like, okay, I could do this for the next six months until I figure out what I really want to do. And, and, you know, I went through a lot of struggle. Um, I almost quit multiple times in my first couple of weeks. Um, but I started to figure it out and I got really frustrated. I, I always tell the story. I had $142 in my checking account. That's it. I was maxed on every credit card. Um, I owed $300,000. I was getting collection call after collection call. And I had $142 in my checking account. And I had to decide, do I, do I pay rent? Do I pay my cell phone bill? Do I pay gas or do I buy leads? And, and the, the reason I chose leads, which most people would say I'm crazy. My in-laws all told me I'm crazy. Everybody told me I'm crazy. They can't believe that you're doing this. And here's the reason that I did it. I saw over and over when I was interviewing, I was interviewing with lots of different companies 
And I'm always the kind of person to say, okay, if if he can do it, I can do it. If she can do it, I can do it. So if, if I'm interviewing with somebody, eventually I'm going to have their position. Eventually I'm going to have their position. So what is their lifestyle? And interview after interview, I'm finding people are either uh, not making the money I want to make. They make a lot of money, but they have no time. They have no life. They're on, they're on their second heart attack, third marriage. And none of it I, I wanted. And so then when I met Edward Pritchett and Brian Delaney and Brandon and Casey, the owners of Symmetry, I realized they had the lifestyle that I wanted. It was income, but it was also time and it was impact. And they were all happy. Like everybody in this office had a smile on their face. And believe it or not, that was unique. I didn't see that anywhere else that I interviewed. I didn't see everybody happy. And I thought, man, this is, this is the kind of group that I want to be a part of. I want to feel the way that they feel. You know, I want to make the income and all that, but I want to, like, I'm used to feeling anxious and stressed and not knowing how I'm going to pay the next bill and, like, just constant anxiety. And here I go into a room full of happiness and positivity and energy and, and people that, are, that want to help other people succeed. And it was so refreshing to me that I said, you know what? My ideas have got me where I'm at. They got me broke. They got me unhappy. Uh, the worst place in my life is because of my ideas. As good as I might think they are, and I know there's a lot of people on this, on this call that have had success probably before, and so we like to think that we have the best ideas, but we have to come to terms with the reality that we are where we're at because of our ideas and our choices. And when I realized that and I owned it, I said, okay, good thing about owning that is that means I'm in control and I can change it. And so I've got to then find the people who have what I want, and I have to listen to their ideas. I have to take my ego and say, okay, you know what? Turn my earpiece off. <laughs> um, but I have to say, you know what? As, as, as great of ideas as I think I have, their ideas got them where they're at. Edward Pritchett was making the income. He had the time freedom. They all had the lifestyle. And they were saying, you need to invest in next week's income. You need to invest in the income in two weeks from now. And you've got to be consistent. You've got to get leads every week. You have to have a plan. You have to know exactly what you're going to do next week, the week after, the week after, the week after, the week after. Every week, you know exactly what you're doing. It needs to become a routine. No inconsistencies. And so I followed their ideas, their, their plan. And I can't take any credit for the transformation that's happened other than the fact that I implemented I followed their ideas as much as sometimes I didn't want to. I followed their ideas and I was just consistent with it, which is one thing I appreciate so much about you, Jeremy, is you were the most consistent of anybody I've ever worked with, literally. Most consistent of anybody I've ever worked with, with implementing the plan. And lo and behold, your first full year in the business, you're number one in all of symmetry. Number one. And I don't think a lot of people really understand when you came into this business, you weren't good. You really weren't. I mean, you weren't good. I wasn't good. And I think a lot of people think that, you know, you see a bodybuilder, you think he's been a bodybuilder his whole life. At one point, he couldn't live very much, you know? And so we were just consistent and we had great mentorship and great training. And now you said to kind of share where we're at. Um, we were able to pay off the debt, the 300,000 in debt. We were able to actually negotiate that down. We didn't pay the 300, we probably paid about 180. And we paid that off within 18 months of being here. And we lived very, very frugally. I mean, uh, Jeremy, I don't think I've ever taken you to the house. I should, because you live near me. I've, I've never taken to the house that we lived in for two years. We lived for two years in about an 800 square foot house, maybe smaller. I haven't actually measured, but maybe smaller than 800 square feet. We had a one-year-old and a five-year-old at the time. It had one bathroom with just a shower. We gave our one-year-old baths in a six-inch Rubbermaid that you normally would store clothes in and slide into the bed. That was his bathtub for two years. And we lived in this. And you know what? We, it, the plan was six months, but we didn't mind it. As, as, as bad as things were for two years, it was actually, I was happy. I think back and I was actually happy because I realized it's not about the environment that makes us happy or unhappy. 
It's about whether you have hope, whether you have a plan, whether you have light at the end of the tunnel. Things were happening so fast for us. I mean, I can't even express to you how quickly when we implemented the plan and we were consistent with it, our agency blew up. I was out there, I, I learned the business, took a month or two, but I started to figure things out. We paid off the debt within 18 months. Six months later, I had six figures saved in the bank. So I'm still living in this 800 square foot house with six figures in the bank. Finally, we ended up building a house, had a baby, now that house is too small, so we sold that, ended up upgrading and buying the house that uh, my wife grew up in on an awesome farm, and we renovated the whole thing, and it's a dream. I mean, it's literally unbelievable. Uh, I'm so beyond grateful that, you know, like I said, I can't take credit. It's just an unbelievable system, and we, we travel the world now, all paid for by the insurance companies, and just to give people, because I know these people are struggling right now. I know these people that just came out of Christmas, and you didn't have the money that you wanted to have for gifts. You didn't, you didn't give your family what you wanted to give them. And you know things aren't quite right for you. I've been there. I've been there year after year after year. And I can tell you that you have a place now. You have a vehicle. All you have to do is put fuel in it, turn the key, and keep the pedal down. Mm. And you can get out. You can get out. You can, you can turn your life entirely around to a place that's unrecognizable. Um, it doesn't happen overnight, it happens night after night mm -hmm. in this business, just being consistent. So, man, that's the summary. That that's that was an incredible, uh, like five, six minute of like how this has been. I, I have to say when I met you, um, man, this was almost three years ago now. So you would have been four, four and a half years into this business. And I know what I what I got to see wasn't the whole process and all the pioneering that you guys had done and, and how everything fit together. Um, as we go into 2020, here's my next question, then I'm going to actually turn it over to some of our leaders. Um, as we go into to 2020, I've seen this shift, right, as, as in who we are as a team, uh, from our identity, identity always being behind, hey, we're the front runners in production, to many of our front runners saying, hey, I just want to get serious about building a business and this passive income and, and building the lifestyle that I want to be able to live. What, I, I don't know necessarily what your mindset was coming in the door. I do know that you, you know, built basically your $16 million a year agency and you, you, you guys talk about it all the time in your first 90 days. If I'm on the webinar and I'm looking, hey, I want to build a, a, a high impact team. I want to build a team and get to the level where, where Brad and Matt Smith is. I know it started in your mindset. So, I mean, yeah, talk to me a little bit about what your mindset was coming here in, in that first 90 days. Um, but then also, what actions that you take and should we be taking if, if we're planning on 2020 being that year that we build the agency that we've, we've dreamed of? What a great question. Okay, so I'm going to give you everything I've, I've experienced and have seen work versus the things that haven't worked, which is a lot. I've seen a lot of people. Uh, have a tons of success and a lot of people that were so qualified, so good that just didn't. And I can tell you exactly the reasons why. So this is the perfect visualization I can come up with. Okay. Some of you guys maybe played sports or maybe you went to a high school football game uh, growing up and you remember Friday night, uh, maybe your kids are playing football, right? And you go to Friday night football, right? If you ever played sports, um, you know that you play harder on Friday night when the stadium's full and the lights are on than you do in practice, right? We all know that. <laughs> and so um, I, I knew that I wanted to build an agency because when I sat in the first training I ever sat in, which is a very small little room, like maybe 20 people, uh, every top person there said, if I could go back and do it all over again, I'd start recruiting day one. That was everybody's answer. If you go back and start over, what would you do differently? Every one of them was, you know, I hate to, hate to repeat the last guy, but 
I have to agree. I'd recruit day one. It was like, same answer across the whole panel. And I said, man, as much as I like my own ideas, as good as I think they are, and as, as much as I want to say, well, I don't have experience. I'm just going to produce first and then I'm going to recruit. I had to say, okay, they've got the lifestyle I want. And so I've got to listen to their ideas. I said, okay, I'm going to have to recruit day one, right? Because I was teachable and I was coachable. And that's the reason we are where we're at. So that's, that's my advice is you got to fill the stadium. Okay. So production going out and producing week after week, it's like showing up Friday night football. And if you don't have a team, it's like showing up, turn the lights on empty stadium and playing by yourself. That's what producing without building is like. Now, build, some people want to come in, they want to build, but they don't really want to produce. And that's below me. I've, I've produced before. I've done, you know, I've, I've gone out and hustled before in different industries. I'm just going to build an agency. That's like going to football and sitting in the stadium and having no game. How many people are going to come to your football game without any players? So I realized I had to fill the stadium and, and the people that are in the stadium, they're potential recruits. They're people I've reached out to in my first 90 days and let them know, hey, this is what I'm doing. I know you're probably, you probably love what you're doing right now. You're probably making the income you want to make. You're probably fulfilled. You, you, you're happy. you got all the time with your family. Just want to let you know where I'm at. Um, I'm excited about building this business. And I'd let, I'd let them know how things are going. So it's like I'm putting people in the stadium. They're watching. Okay, whether you're doing cold market or warm market, you put people in the stadium and you say, watch. And that was week after week. I wanted to build a post on GroupMe. I wanted to be able to send text out. I wanted to be able to, on that next phone call. I wanted to be able to say, man, you'd never would believe what happened yesterday, not months ago, yesterday. <laughs> and this Jeremy is why you're so effective. When you can say last week, I wrote $13,000 because you've got a stadium full right now with 20 some people on a webinar. And you can say last week I did $12,000. And what happens is people in the stadium, some of them will say, you know what? I want to play. I want to get on the field. And so that's all we did to build this business. And that's why we had so much momentum early on is because we had so many people saying, you know what? I want to get in the field. I want to be in the spotlight. And so we put people in the spotlight, right? We put a Kate, a Kate Weir or, or a Sergio Rodriguez in the spotlight and highlight their success, right? We put up on the Hall of Fame. And so that's, I mean, it's a simple analogy, but I'm telling you guys, if you want momentum, and that's the one thing, if you are chasing one thing in 2020, it should not be production. It should not just be recruiting. It should, should, it should be momentum because momentum is contagious and it's fun. And you can be in an 800 square foot house giving your one-year-old bath, baths in a six-inch rubber made and have six figures growing in your account. And you're going to be happy because you've got momentum. You've got things happening. So that's how you do it. That's how you create it. And that's what I would do. Putting a plan together for 2020 is just massive action. Back up. Here's the last question. Here's, here's how I'd like to close it down, if you will. Um, I, I want to know just from your perspective, obviously advisory board member, you're an associate partner. You've seen the different uh, the things that Symmetry's brought on board. I feel like we're postured um, in a way that this company probably has never been postured before for somebody to uh, really a bunch of people to go in and have a ton of success. So my question is in, in your opinion, what's the ultimate prize in 2020 and how, how do you position yourself in 2020 as a, as a field leader? Um, and you know what I'm talking about. I know the rest of the group don't, but as a field leader building up to that point where, where you're getting to be a business leader uh, in 2020. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, it, it has to do with having a plan for recruiting. You can't just plan for recruiting. You have to have a plan for it because plans change, decisions are permanent. You can't just say, I plan to recruit. You actually have to have a plan for it. And it's again, weekly and consistency. And you know, for, if you're doing cold market, it's going to cost a little bit of money. It doesn't cost a lot. In fact, it's probably the best investment you could physically ever make. If you looked at the return on investment, 
we've done webinars before we look at if you spend X amount per month within 12 months this is your return from overrides it's it's unbelievable it's it's the best investment you could possibly make into your own business um, but it's gonna cost some money so you're gonna have to have some resources and you're gonna have, to have a certain amount of interviews that you set up but here, here's what a field leader here's what a field leader everybody on this webinar can be a field leader if you make the decision to do it here's what that means ten thousand dollars I'll write this down okay ten thousand dollars a week in, or in a month ten thousand dollars a month in placed production placed production so it might take you 13 14 fifteen thousand of submitted in order to get ten thousand placed that's number one number two is five direct contracts meaning recruited agents five and that that could include if they're enrolled in license coach oh there we go all right 10k issued business uh five direct contracts or recruits and and what a recruit is is a license coach enrolled or b the actual contract filled out and they're already licensed so licensed or unlicensed that that counts five direct now out of those five, here's what you're gonna identify in 30 days within that month, you're going to identify two out of the five that are actually moving. Three are gonna be dragging their feet. So we have a saying in this business, you work with the greedy, not the needy. <laughs> the greedy are the ones that are moving, right? So you're gonna identify the two that are moving and you call them up and you say, hey Jeremy, this is Brad. I see you're moving through license coach. You're getting on our webinars. Uh, you're you're starting to get leads. Um, I've I've set aside three interview times per week for the next four weeks, specifically for you. So, out of those three per week, next week I've got three time slots that I'm setting aside for you for th for one market recruiting. Three people that you can identify, line up a three with, put me on the phone. I'm going to help you build your agency. I'm going to do the work. You just get my phone, and we'll do a three way, and I'll do the work, and out of those three per week, that's 12, you're gonna recruit a total of five more contracts. This is the average, okay? This is the average numbers. So if you have five direct and five that are second level agents, that's 10 contracts or, or in license coaching rollers per month. Very, very doable. If you saw the work involved, it's about four hours of recruiting per week. So if I asked you this question, is there any reason you can you can't is there any reason you can tell me that there's no way you could set aside four hours of dedicated recruiting time per week? I think all of us would say no, no reason, right? I, I, no reason I couldn't do that. Is there any reason you can't do ten thousand net place production per week or per month? Probably not. Those that's the only requirement. You're a field leader. If you do that, you absolutely cannot lose in this business. I've never ever seen it. If you do that consistently every week. You cannot lose. You will grow an agency and it'll continue to, to duplicate. A business leader is somebody that is now out of the field. And I would say a field leader is anybody that is doing up to 200,000 a month in production. You're a field leader. 200,000 a month. At 200,000 a month in total team volume, you can, you're probably got enough of a team that you don't need to be in the field anymore. You don't need to do 10,000 a place production. You can get out of the field and just focus on building your agency. You're gonna have probably two field leaders within your agency. So if you had two field leaders in your agency and each of them are doing two, 10 contracts a month, that's 20, and you're still doing the same recruiting, you're still doing five direct and helping two get another five, that's a total of 30 contracts a month. That's what the top people in this company are doing. It's just a matter of duplication. It, this is not a hard business, it's not a complicated business. It really isn't. It's just a matter of knowing the activity, which we've just given you, and making the commitment to do it every week. So is that what you want me to touch on, Jeremy? Yeah, that that was, that was absolutely phenomenal. I think when I seen that the first time, I go, man, that makes this business sound way more simple. I think, um, you know, you hear 2020 uh, vision, which I mean, I'm all for, you know, $20,000 in production and 20 recruits. But but when you broke it down, how simple it can be to run at the level of a, of a field leader and really to, to go into that business leader uh, sort of level, all I need is, is five direct 
and I need to be working with two of those people that are moving. And that's how I come up with 10 contracts. So if I have 10,000 issued, not written, 10,000 in issued business every single month, and I'm recruiting 10 people between the five direct and, and the, the, the two people that we're moving, you can build yourself to that 200,000 plus level in this business. And that, that, that just added so much simplicity to me. Um, man, this has been so good already. I know it's nine o'clock. I don't want to shut it down. I, I want to give what, whatever you feel like. You, you've been able to see the numbers. You've seen the team uh, over the last couple of years. Take us out with, with any last words, um, any words of wisdom that you can give us as, as sort of a launching pad into uh, 2020. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave everyone with this. And if you need to get off at nine o'clock, I understand you can go ahead and get off. But I'm going to give you one last golden nugget. I feel like has made all the difference for me in the world. And I continue to have to remind myself of this. Like when you hear some of these numbers about recruiting five direct and total, another five and total of 10, you may feel the way I felt uh, years ago. I thought, man, how in the world is that possible? That sounds like so much work. And, uh, and then you start to do it and you realize it's not that much work. It's not that hard. It's, it's just a matter of, I didn't know how to do that. And so I assumed it was going to be hard. And so what I've learned is that I need to continue to ask better questions. So if there's one thing that you can do in 2020, it's ask better questions because better questions lead to better results. If you want a better life, if you want more income, if you want more happiness, if you want better relationship, whatever it is that you want, more purpose, um, just overall happiness, ask better questions. Because here's the thing, we, we expect too little out of life. This is what I've learned. We expect way too little out of life. And so, so um, Marlon, Marlon Faulkner, if you guys know Marlon Faulkner, top contract 110 uh, in the company, unbelievable transformation, went from being homeless to, he, he made over half a million dollars last year, all passive. I don't think he wrote any policies himself, all passive. And uh, he just called me before this, this webinar today. He's down in Puerto Rico with uh, his family and Edward Pritchett, and he's on the beach uh, talking with uh, the owners of the Patriots. And another guy that just built a $10 million home, and it's just a part-time summer home that he only spends a few weeks at. And, and he's like talking with these ultra-wealthy people, and they're just normal people. But they ask better questions, and so they get better answers and so we've got to, we've got to, so here's what I mean. If you are asking, how do I make $50,000 a year in this business? You'll figure that out, but you're never going to make a hundred. If you're asking, how do I make a hundred thousand a year? You'll probably figure that out too, but you'll never make 500 or six figures a month. And guess what? It's all possible. It's all possible. And, and so, you know, you can't just jump. Like I couldn't come into this business being $300,000 in debt and say, how can I build, how can I go to get to a six figure monthly income? I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to make that mental leap, that belief jump. It was too big, right? But I could say, how do I get out of debt? And then start asking a little bit better question, a little bit bigger question and continuing to raise the bar because it's not, it's not hard. Like to, the difference of making $5,000 a month here and 20 is very, anyway, so I'm going to ask you publicly in, in front of your team. And you don't have to give me an answer because it's probably going to take you a couple of days. But here's what I want to know. If your life depended on it, you look at the number of contracts that the Whitaker agency submits on a monthly, let's say that it's, I don't know, let's say that it's uh, 20. I don't, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what the number is. Let's say that it, total Whitaker agency currently is 20 contracts, new recruits per month. If your life depended on it, could you put a plan together that got your team eventually, maybe you don't have all the people in place yet or, the, or all the resources in place, but could you, are you physically capable if your life depended on it to get your agency to 50 contracts a month? If your life depended on it, how confident are you, Jeremy? You want the answer now? You said two days from now. No, I am. I'm, I, I, I'm not going to ask you how. In two days from now, I'm going to ask you how. I just want to know how what, confident what, are you? 100% confident that we could get that done. 
Okay, Kate, Kate Weir. How confident, if your life depended on it, maybe you don't have all the answers, maybe you'd have to call some people, maybe you'd have to, to get on a phone with Edward Pritchard or myself or Brian Delaney. How confident are you that if your life depended on it, you could get your agency to be submitting 20 contracts a month? How confident are you that you could eventually get to that point? Completely confident. 100%, right? Yes. Sergio Rodriguez, how, how confident? Very confident. Brody Moss, how confident? Very confident. We can do this. 100%? 100% confident. Okay, so then the question is, how? Because we've not been asking better questions. We've been asking mediocre questions and getting mediocre results. So if we start asking, how do I get to 20 contracts a month? Because once you get there, you change the question. How do I get to 50 contracts a month? Once you get there, how do I get to 100 contracts a month? Because there is a direct correlation between contracted agents and income. You can look at the leaderboards. You can do the math. They send them out every single week. You can look at number of contracts, number of recruits compared to passive income, direct correlation. If you can figure out how to get five, you can figure out how to get 10. If you can figure out how to get 10, you can figure out how to get 20. It's just expanding and duplicating. That's all this business is. So the question is, pick a goal. What do, what, where do you want? And I would have it around number of contracts. That's the number one indicator in this business that, that leads to lifestyle, not just income, but lifestyle, number of contracts. So if we know that, set a goal and say, okay, how do I get there? If my life depended on it, not a, not a hope, not I'm going to recruit more people. That, that's not an answer for your life depending on it. That's, a, that's an answer based off of hopes and dreams crossing your fingers. If your life depended on it, you're going to have a plan that's bulletproof. That's the plan you want for 2020. So ask better questions, set the goal a little higher, and then have a detailed plan, bullet point. Write it down so that you could email it to somebody and they know exactly what your plan is to get there. So that's, that's what I would say, Jeremy. Um, everybody on the phone can do it. Everybody can have this call next year, wrapping up 2020, and it can be a celebration call because you had a plan to get there, you implemented the plan, you were consistent with it, and your life is different. You had a better Christmas because of it. Maybe you're down in Puerto Rico celebrating with the Pritchetts. But it's all going to start with a plan, making a commitment, being consistent in 2020. Mm -hmm.